Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. For those who haven't seen my content before, I'm a games critic. I do first impressions of video games. I like to focus on indie titles, and my mission is to promote good games, help them get the sales that they deserve, and protect consumers from terrible purchases. I like to think that that's what any critic does. Today I'd like to talk to you about someone that's not interested in consumer protection and created a game that any sane person would consider a terrible purchase. Those people are the great minds behind Day One Gary's Incident, a first-person survival game developed by Wild Game Studios, a French-Canadian developer. Before I start though, let me explain a little bit about the business I'm in. This video will not contain game footage, and I think you'll understand why in a moment. There are people who make a living on YouTube by creating videos which have an ad placed on them. Depending on the size of the audience, you can make decent money this way, similar to the way a television station works. As you might imagine, this is a bit of a minefield. Partners have to be careful not to infringe copyright with their work, and YouTube is extremely skittish about that. As a result, networks were formed which made blanket agreements with YouTube to monetize gaming content. The networks are responsible for any violation of YouTube's terms of service and police their own channels, at least that's the theory. Unfortunately, YouTube decided it didn't really want to do things this way and allowed companies to use an automated claiming system to immediately take down content that they claimed belonged to them. For the most part, games developers and publishers are extremely sensible and don't use this system. The laws surrounding this kind of content are very much out of date, arguments rage about how transformative a work a gaming video can be, and overall we sit in this rather weird spot, the idea of monetizing content that is as much ours as it is theirs. The topic of Let's Play comes up a lot in relation to this, but that's not really the kind of content that I generally do. My biggest and most successful series is a first impressions critique by the name of WTF Is, and this is the subject of today's video. You see, critique and review are protected by US fair use doctrine, and rightfully so. The idea that you could use copyright law as a spear to attack those who are criticizing you is an affront to free speech and freedom of the press. It's horrendously anti-consumer. It's unquestionably censorship. Imagine, if you will, for a moment, a world where the only reviews of products that are allowed to stick around were positive. How many people would end up being taken in by misleading marketing? How much money would be wasted on products that are clearly not up to scratch? Critique exists to protect consumers from unscrupulous companies and is a necessary part of our society. Wild Game Studio disagrees. A few days ago, I encountered the following message on my YouTube channel. As you can see, this is a standard copyright strike. Three of these and your account is shut down, your videos removed. The system is there to stop people from uploading things that they don't own. It's rightfully used to stop people from using YouTube as a dumping ground for pirated media. Sometimes, however, it's abused. You'll note the game is from Wild Game Studios. It essentially says, you've used our copyright material without permission and we are forcibly taking down your video. To back this up, the CEO of Wild Game Studio, Stefan Woods, issued the following statement on the Steam forums. We protected our copyright because Total Biscuit has no right to make advertising revenues with our license. Stefan Woods is lying, and here's why. I don't even have to resort to debate points on this one. That's the wonderful thing about it. I don't even have to begin soapboxing on the rights of the consumer, the protection of free speech, freedom of the press, and the importance of critique, because this guy was so unfathomably stupid that he left plenty of evidence lying around which proves that the statement is false. Let's begin, shall we? Exhibit A. The email chain with Wild Game Studio, in which we approach the developer with our standard letter of introduction and request for review code. We send hundreds of these a month. We deal with some of the biggest developers on the planet using emails like this, such as Ubisoft or Square Enix. We're not exactly a small or obscure channel, and our role within the industry is well understood. When we request review code, we do so with the intention of producing a monetized video. That's how the business works. This is made abundantly clear in our emails, and we provide links to all of our previous videos to ensure that developers fully understand what exactly this is. Stefan, the CEO of the company, responded to our email in less than 24 hours, providing a Steam key for the game and requesting a link to the store page in the video description, which we duly complied with. The permission to monetize this video is strongly implied. We requested review code with the express written intention of creating a video. We provided links to what we do and an accurate description of who we are. Stefan replied within 24 hours and gave us a review code. These are the facts. It's unthinkable that Stefan could possibly believe that we had no intentions of monetizing the content. Professional reviews, critics and commentators rely on ad revenue to pay the bills. 
This is common knowledge. You're gonna see ads on IGN, Rock Paper Shotgun, Kotaku, PC Gamer, you name it. This is common industry practice. We've produced almost 500 videos in this format, and this is the first time any company has attempted this kind of attack. Exhibit B. Since I apparently have no right to make advertising revenue with their license, I checked to see if any other videos had been taken down. I'll give you three guesses. So, let's have a look at a few, shall we? Rabid Retrospect Games. Let's play Day One Gary's Incident. 33,000 views. Monetized. Still available to watch. Nuke Dukem. Let's play Day One Gary's Incident. 105,000 views. Monetized. Still available to watch. Triple Six Games. Day One Gary's Incident Gameplay. 6,000 views. Monetized. Still available. And here's one of my personal favorites from the legend himself, whose name I always screw up. Burger Paul. Yes, there you go. I broke day one Gary's shitty incident. 115,000 views, monetized. Still available, and quote from the description, this game is like a sponge for badness. Isn't it therefore a little odd that the only video which mysteriously didn't have the right to monetize was the most viewed, top ranked, and was highly critical of the title? Hum Dealer Hum. Gee, that's rather convenient, isn't it? Exhibit C, just in case you needed any more convincing. This is a post from the CEO of Wild Game Studios about a month ago on the Steam forums. In response to a request to allow users to make YouTube videos of the game, his response reads, Sure, you can make a YouTube of our game. So, not only was strongly implied permission granted in the original communication with Stefan, he also gave blanket public permission via the Steam forum. As you can see, his statement that I had no right to make advertising revenue from my critique is clearly false, and that's without even going into the way that networks operate, the nature of gameplay footage on YouTube, that's an entirely different discussion for another time. Stefan Woods is not operating with clean hands, and if this were the only thing he'd done, perhaps in a fit of anger, I could at least have understood that. It's hard to have your work criticised, I should know, it hurts, and... That's multiplied many times over by the ease in which hundreds, sometimes thousands of voices can all be shouting at you at once. We just weren't built to deal with that. It affects us all to greater or lesser extents. However, this wasn't just an emotional outburst. The video has been up for weeks. He clearly didn't lash out without thinking, nor is he otherwise an honest man. During Day One Gary's Incident's failed Kickstarter, it can be seen that Stefan Woods backed his own Kickstarter project with at least one $10,000 pledge. Indeed, the kick track data for the project was highly suspect, with a massive surge of donations, ironically enough on day two of the campaign, followed by next to nothing. Indeed, the campaign actually lost money on several days, including over a thousand in one day a week into the campaign, which consisted of only three donors. On average, each supposed donor to this campaign donated over $225 each. Though, of course, this is skewed by the hilariously large donations from the company's CEO himself. The game's Metacritic page is also littered with hilarious and obviously astroturfed reviews in broken English, as the developers have desperately tried to lie about their game to attract customers. They even tried to bribe users to vote for their game on Greenlight by offering Steam keys for votes. I guess it was fairly effective, since somehow, this mess of a title managed to get through the Greenlight system. As you might imagine, the developers are also deleting threads critical of their game on the Steam forum. I think you can see, this is not an innocent developer being attacked and abused by some YouTuber out to profiteer from their hard work. This is a developer who has repeatedly acted in an underhanded way and continues to do so to this very day. A developer that not only cannot take criticism, but actively goes out to censor it with the sole purpose of selling as many copies of their wretched disaster of a game as possible. Myself and my network will take whatever action is necessary to ensure that this company does not get away with what they've done. However, this highlights a wider problem, an issue that must be addressed. Look at how easily a company was able to censor the most watched and prominent critique of their game by abusing YouTube's copyright claim system. Look at how they were able to completely flaunt the notion of networks policing their partners and use a shoot first, ask questions later form to deny revenue to someone that they didn't like and potentially destroy their entire livelihood. That's what happens when you get three strikes, folks. Make no mistake, your channel goes away. This is not the first time that the system has been abused. About a year ago, I received two copyright strikes from Sega of Japan, videos of the game Shining Force 3, a title from the Sega Saturn era. 
In this particular sweep, Sega also took down videos that didn't even feature gameplay, webcam vlogs, just talking about the game. Why did they do this, you might ask? What possible reason would they have? Search ranking. They used the copyright claim system on YouTube to eliminate videos with high search ranking so the trailer for their new game Shining Ark would rise to the top. At least 17 channels received strikes. Most were never removed. Some channels remain terminated to this day. Thankfully, with the support of my network, the copyright claims on my channel were removed, but others weren't so lucky. Alongside the malicious, we also have the plain stupid. Nintendo runs automated copyright claims on trailer footage. During our video podcast on the Polaris YouTube channel, we were discussing our experiences with Pokemon X and Y, so we played a little part of the trailer for the title. Nintendo's automated claims prevented us from monetizing our work, three hours of our work, for a minute of what is essentially an ad for the game. You can argue whether or not this is okay, and no doubt you will, but all of this and far more is going on right now and is endangering critique on YouTube. This site has changed the face of media in many ways, not least in the sense that games critique has evolved and taken different forms. No longer are the only ways to investigate a game a three-minute scripted video or a two-page article. There are plenty of different formats available, thanks to YouTube, and they all empower the consumer to make the right choices. Critique makes this industry better, but it's under attack. YouTube's policies allow for flagrant abuse of the copyright system to censor review and critique, and it has to stop. This would not be acceptable anywhere else, but it seems almost routine on YouTube. These are your partners that are being attacked, Google. These are the people who you take the lion's share of the ad revenue from. Google has expressed its desire for more high quality and professional content on the service, but doesn't do anywhere near enough to protect the people that are trying to produce it. I gotta be honest, I'm fortunate. My channel is large, as is my following, and I'm backed by a great network with a lot of resources. I can get my voice heard, but what about those smaller channels that can't? As we saw in the Sega incident, those channels have no protection, and when someone decides to stamp on their proverbial face to silence them, they have nobody to turn to. YouTube wants to be taken seriously. Fine. We're here to try and help make that happen by producing solid, regular, high-quality content that people want to watch. But unless they can protect their content partners from this kind of attack, the kind of people they want producing content for the site are going to be far too afraid of making it. I'm asking Google to take a stand against censorship, as they have in the past, and take a long, hard look at their implementation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and see how it can be improved. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the developers, publishers, and PR organizations that understand the right to criticize. We live in uncertain times. Games media is evolving in unexpected directions, and the law hasn't quite caught up to that yet. It's telling, I think, of how understanding and forward-thinking these organizations are that in the vast majority of circumstances, this evolution is allowed to go unhindered. I dearly hope that that continues. We're all made stronger through reasonable cooperation. I'd also like to thank everyone who watched this video. I would very much appreciate it if you could share it with as many people as possible. It's very important that people know what is going on when it comes to critique on YouTube. This is the kind of thing we produce in order to allow you to make informed decisions. We are fighting for you. That's what we're here to do. Unfortunately, every day we have to sit there worrying, will some company decide to abuse the copyright claim system to destroy my livelihood today? I will be donating the proceeds of this video as well as the ad revenue generated by the Day One Gary's Incident Critique to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, a charity dedicated to protecting rights and free speech on the internet. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I hope I'll never have to make a video like this again. No promises. I'll see you next time.